the sin, a social insurance number creates a new agent of the government that you're filling the role as. So ultimately they could have you playing all three roles at different times because you can do that without question because you're acting in a different capacity every time. So if you're getting a social insurance number <clears throat> and if you read through the Canada, like all the statutes uh, for Canada, we know damn well that uh, that business that they define Canada, the, what Canada defines business as is performing a function of government. It's right in their own law books. If you're not performing a function of government, they can't, they can't force the Income Tax Act on you because it only applies to agents of the government, period. That's why if you have a social insurance number and you're acting in the capacity of an agent of the government, you're going to get taxed. That also means that most other statutes can be enforced against you because the minute you're performing a function of government, public performs, government performs public service, doesn't it? All there's also would also fall underneath the bylaws of Canada being a corporation. Well, that's what that is. So if you're acting as an employee of, of the corporation, you have to follow the corporation bylaws. There you go. If you're performing a function of government. Now, if you're putting a Manitoba license plate on your car, right? it actually designates your car as being used for a public service. It's right in the insurance payments. I've shown people that before. Oh, hang on, I'll be right back. Oh. So, is there anything with that that people don't understand? We can turn a light on here, by the way, too, if you want. It's kind of dark in here now. No? Let's flick one of those guys up. Does it make sense? Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, it's the most simple thing that there is to really understand that that's really what's going on. I think that probably 90% of the people out there teaching this stuff right now are probably working for the government, making sure they're making this as confusing as possible for people. Yeah. So if they want to do business with Canada, yep. we're best off really to create our own corporation. Well, no. What's wrong with this one? Yep, you're already the sole shareholder, and that, that's, that's the money roll right there. Okay. When you own all the equity, when you've bought all the shares for a corporation, mm -hmm. you appoint the people that run the corporation. Okay, so now I have a question about the actual corporation. Yep. So as soon as you incorporate it, you're basic, you basically, by the way the government portrays it, is you basically gave it to them because it's an entity of itself. No, and no one owns it. You understand, a, you, know, you understand what I understand what you're, what you're trying to say. So if you had an incorporation, how do you prove that they don't have any rights to it? Well, they don't have any rights to it. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> sorry, there's certain roles that are inherent when, when creating a trust because you're giving something to the government. The government's got to give something to you kind of thing, right? So if you're supposed to perform a duty and they're supposed to perform a duty. Equal consideration. Consideration, all that kind of stuff. Though that question comes into play, but... We could presume all we want about what we're supposed to do for the government. Well, I'll give you an example. Okay. okay. So let's say you own an incorporation. You are the, the sole proprietor of it, right? And you, you can't be a sole proprietor of a corporation. Well, you're the full, uh, you're, the, you're the only stockholder. Okay, to shareholder. It, shareholder to it. Yes. Now, if it's an entity of itself and you create it, right, and you... How do you transfer assets between yourself and the corporation then without Corporation of Canada wanting to get their fingers in? Well, <clears throat> Canada doesn't own any of the stuff that the, the corporation owns. The corporation owns it itself outright. It's its own legal entity capable of owning property, capable of buying and selling, capable of carrying on business. That doesn't mean it's carrying on business under Canadian law. So you just have to dispute that presumption? Ask them. Don't ask them. Tell them. Say it's, it's, and when you're contacting them, you contact them as this guy up here, yeah. right? And just ask them. Just say, uh, or, or tell them, say, hey, um, as far as I'm aware, I've made a determination that we're not obligated to obey any of your statutes. Yeah, in the absence of proof to the contrary, yeah, I if, presume this. There you go. If you have proof to the contrary, you got 21 days yeah. to respond with proof of a claim. Otherwise, you know, what more proof could you need in a court file? Yeah, otherwise, <clears> this will be my lawful. Yep. Uh, yep. Meeting, yep. Are you claiming I am an employee that's obligated to obey the charter of, of the Corporation of Canada? Make 
then try and prove there, it. There's a million different ways you could, you could approach this kind of stuff. It's along the same lines of uh, when we talked last week about the, uh, the, the, the new e-course, the claim of rights and stuff like that, about how people were like, and we fell victim to it, uh, you know, two years ago or a year ago, we were sending in these massive claim of rights that were, you know, like the only thing that I missed in there was my right to shave, you know, first thing in the morning, kind of like everything was in there. And then we kind of got thinking about the flip side. We're like, well, wait a minute, instead of telling the government everything we feel that is our right to do, why don't we just contact them and say, hey, is there something you're claiming I can't do? So now it just became a one-word sentence instead of 30 pages of nonsense that we don't, nobody really cares about. Because they're not disputing I have human rights. Right? That's not even the question. That's not even what you're in court for if there's been a real, if there's been a charge. In the capacity, the role that you were playing when you got pulled over, if, if you were acting in the capacity of a trustee when you got pulled over, you were breaking one of their statutory obligations. And yeah, the man can be held responsible for that because that's that's the, the position he was playing in the, in the hockey game. He's not going to the penalty box because he, uh, because, you know, his, some, he violated somebody's human rights. He's going to the penalty box because he broke one of the rules of the game when he was playing a position in hockey. So no human rights were violated. Because if you agreed to be an employee, you agreed to abide by employee rules. And if you didn't, you got punished unless you weren't one of these guys. It starts to get confusing from there because people always have like specific questions about things that are not really part of the model so we could get into some stuff like that. That's it. We'll pause it there, take a break for a few minutes and then people can ask questions after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, just anybody, but uh, mostly you want to give notice to the government. So just for the camera, we were ex just kind of all talking here for a little while off camera, and people were starting to wonder, well, you know, how should we get started in, in kind of doing some of the things that we want to do with the government? And so I was just going to explain that the first starter and the first great thing to do is that if you have a business relationship with the government, you may want to establish your roles. Because if your roles aren't established, then like I keep saying about the dinner scenario, you're just a bunch of people sitting at the dinner table with everybody wondering who's going to pay the bill. So you want to be the guy now that walks in and says, hey, before we have dinner, I just want you to guys know uh, we're all paying our own meals. Okay? So the way you do that with the government is to send them a letter saying, you know what, uh, the birth certificate is the proof that you're the, the, the shareholder. That's your receipt. You own all the equity in that name. That's your receipt. Period. So you're the sole shareholder down here. You're going to say, yeah. If you guys are disputing the fact that I'm the, the, the sole shareholder, uh, you know, feel free to let me know. But as it stands right now, I'm telling you, I am the sole shareholder of, and I don't mind using my name, by the way, or I don't mind using the name of my legal person while we're doing this kind of stuff, because if I really feared these guys and I thought they were going to come shoot me or something. Everybody's always, oh God, no, I don't want my face online or I don't want people to know my real name because, uh, you know, I think they're going to come kick my door in and beat me and stuff like that. That's insane. Like, it almost, ne it never happens, actually. I was going to say almost never happens. It never happens. I've never actually heard of that happening. Okay? Right. Nobody's actually persecuted because they send stuff to the government. Believe me, if, you, if people saw half the stuff I sent to these people, I should be in a wheelchair right now if they actually came and kicked your door in and beat you up for doing that kind of stuff. Or if, if not, dead. So it doesn't happen. And I've been pretty belligerent at times. And I've seen, some people have seen some of my paperwork and uh, I'm not, yeah, I get pretty belligerent with them because I just don't care. I feel bad sometimes even after I send stuff. But anyways, that's irrelevant. So once you've established this, what prevents you from saying, I believe you guys are all Actually, there's no comma there. I'm this guy. That's what your letter says. And I believe everybody that works for the government are these guys. That's all of you. If you're claiming something different, let me know. I'm going to give you 21 days. If you don't respond, then you've admitted to being this, which they are. And then you say, and also, just so you know, because I'm the sole shareholder, I want to protect my investment. 
I'm appointing this guy as the principal administrator of my legal person. He's going to handle all policy because I want to make sure my investment's protected. If you guys are claiming otherwise, you have a different idea, or you're claiming I don't have the right to appoint the director of my legal person, you got 21 days to get back to me with a lawful excuse as to why I can't do that and that I'm full of it and this isn't really what's going on. Question. Yes. Are you purposely writing your name and heading in uh, Absolutely. Caps Absolutely. In, oh. in large and small? I'm going to have to pause for one second again. Sorry. And then we'll get back into this. Go again. Okay, we're back. You asked if there's a, a reason why I'm Changing the spelling of my name. Specifically using all caps. At yes. The of that board and you're using small and yes. Or large and small. This is the name of the legal person. Is that your name, right? This is the person, legal person, what corporation? Capital N. That is the legal person. That is the trust. If you want to call it a trust, call it a trust. If you want to call it an estate, call it an estate. It's a legal person. It's the best thing to call it. It's the most applicable. So that's the birth certificate name is the legal person. It creates an identity. And that's what we talked about before. And in that identity, there's different roles, just like a chess game. Right? The game's called chess. In it, there's pieces that have different names, but what's more important is what function those pieces carry out. Right? Yeah. So the sole shareholder is the guy that put all the equity into everything. Grantor, if it's trust law. Yeah. The grantor is appointing this guy. That's the real guy. Yeah, and I say I like to say show, show, uh, sole shareholder because corporate law is easier to explain than trust law. There's trust handbooks that are this thick. And you could almost come up with anything from, from reading half the crap in there, right? Like it's just unbelievable complicated. Even Weiss's, yeah, even Weiss's trust handbook, which is a handbook. A lot of people read that and they're like, huh? You just can't understand it. And you're not going to walk into court either. And it's the same thing as the UCC argument that, that people like to do. You know, there's all sorts of people learning UCC and they're going to go into court and they're just going to have at it with that judge in UCC law. What a bunch of nonsense. You cannot possibly argue UCC law in a court with a judge. And it's irrelevant. It actually has no real bearing on what's going on. It does, but it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's a, it's an, why make a, a complicated argument out of a simple argument? And this is very simple. You have shareholders. Everybody knows corporate law. Everybody knows that shareholders appoint directors. And if the director is not doing their job and they're not getting the return on their investment they're like and they don't like the policies the directors are doing or the directors are stealing so much money from the corporation that it's insolvent, then they vote them out. They get rid of them and they put somebody in that is going to make them money on their investment. So that's where the true seat of power comes from. And that's who you are and that's what the birth certificate is. That's why it's such an important document. It's a receipt for the investment, which makes you the shareholder. There's probably a million different terms for it, but I like describing it that way because it's easy to understand. Everybody can understand that they're a shareholder. It's simple. And it's simple to understand that the shareholders appoint the director. The only reason I put my name there is because it actually it, 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 it identifies me a little bit more clearly, right? The man. I'm the man that's acting in the role of director, administrator. I mean, a director directs movies, right? Who walks in and tells the director he's doing a shitty job and replaces him? Nobody except the people funding the movie. You're doing an absolutely awful job of Transformers 3. We're replacing you. You ruin the whole damn movie. You're fired. Who else does that to the director of, the, of a movie? Nobody. Except these guys. But he's playing in two capacities. And the director has a whole bunch of employees. employees. 